Welcome back to Oakhaven. So we are working on a project right now that's again a little different from what we normally do um, because it involves planting. We don't normally do a lot of planting on our property, but we're working on a project with our church where we're um, trying to make it uh, their landscape more uh, native and natural. So part of that is that we're taking part of their lawn area and converting it to uh, woodland. So we're starting off right now. We've got an area that's about uh, three quarters of an acre to an acre that we've uh, planted trees in. They're all, um, we, we got them as bare root uh, seedlings um, this spring. So the first step was after planting them was to protect them from the deer because we have a serious deer problem and we didn't want the deer coming in. Uh, munching off those terminal buds on all of the the, uh, the trees. So we've been trying to work out ways to do that. Right now, uh, let me just show you, we've been testing things in our backyard here um, because we tried a number of things out in the field and we'll, we'll show you some more of that later um, that didn't work. So we're trying to find some things that do work out there. What we, we're, the trees that we're, or the tubes that we're using, we bought these at uh, AM Leonard, which is in Ohio. Um, they're called something grow tube, max grow tubes or something like that. Um, they're pretty well designed, I think. Um, they all are rolled at the top and the bottom. These are the, the five foot tall ones. Uh, the idea was to get ones that are tall enough that uh, the deer can't can't reach into them. So we got the, the, the tallest ones we can get, which are five feet tall here. Um, so the tops are rolled so that they don't um, hurt the, the, um, the branches when they start coming out. The bottoms are not perforated and then the tops are perforated. This allows for ventilation up at the top, but the bottom not being perforated allows us to come along and if we need to take care of weeds like spray at the bottom, we can do that without having to worry about uh, spraying the tree itself. So there's the tubes. They come with the, the twist ties on them, um, not twist ties, but um, cable ties on them, um, pretty convenient. We were, so the, the tubes cost like five and a quarter a piece. You buy them in sets of five. Uh, I thought that was pretty expensive for trees that we spent, I think, $2 a piece for the trees, and then we're spending five and a quarter for the protection on it. But the goal is to get a nice tree, and it was worthwhile. So we've got the, the tree tube there. Our first thought was we didn't want to put a whole lot more money into it. Um, so we bought these fairly thin bamboo stakes, which I think were about 30 cents a piece. Uh, we've got two different sizes um, we've tried at different times uh, and we we stuck those into the ground and put them into the tube and they uh because one was not enough it was just going to break it off we took the bottom cable tie off and moved it up and then put in two parallel bamboo stakes hoping that that would hold it um it's still this is too flimsy and they, they would break off the the bamboo was breaking um because we took the the tie off the bottom, the bottom would kick out and it would fall over and it was just kind of a headache and uh, it didn't look very good for the, uh, the, the front yard of the church. Um, so that was not working very well. So then we tried an approach of cable tying the bamboo rods on at an angle so it would create a triangle so that it wouldn't move as much. Um, but we had the same types of problems. It, uh, it would break the ends or it would... Uh, um, the bottom would kick out. It wasn't working very well. So that was the 30 cents a piece, 60 cent option. Then we started looking into other options of what we could do. Traditionally, what people would do is put a, a wooden post down into here. I was concerned about the wooden post because this is a long-term project. And I thought if I put a wooden post in the ground, it's going to rot away. I don't know how long wooden posts will last, but I was reluctant to, to do that. Um, so we, we've tried some other options. Um, this was the most secure option. This is just taking and tethering it off with tent stakes. And we could do this. The, the string was negligible. And the tent stakes, I think, were, you know, it was under a dollar for this option. Um, and it's very secure. It's not falling over. It's not doing anything. Um, the problem with this is that then in this woodland we have this acre lot, you've got all of these wires that are crossing over it. And if you're trying to walk around in there, you're trying to keep people from tripping over them. Or if people do trip over them and it falls over, it wouldn't be a very good option. Um, if you wanted to mow, this would be a real headache to mow around. 
I also, because I, I don't have any stake on here, I'm just relying on the, the tree tube for support. The way I did it, if you want to look at this, for those that maybe want to try this, um, I just put a nail in here, tied the string to a nail, and then slipped it through one of the, the holes. So I don't have any other post. It's just relying on this. And I don't know how well these tubes are going to hold up over five or ten years if these just collapse or start breaking up or there's this is too much stress on them. If the tube breaks or bends, the whole thing falls apart and it doesn't work. So then we were looking at other options. Um, this here we have, I've got it connected so it's hard to see. This we have um, just a fiberglass driveway marker that um, we could buy fairly inexpensively when they were on sale. They were, um, what, a little less than $2 a piece on sale. Because these are like four foot tall rods with a foot in the ground, so only like three feet sticking out of the ground, there's a good two feet here that doesn't have anything through it. Does it matter? Maybe it doesn't matter. Um, but they're kind of flexible, but that may be a good thing because as the tree grows up, it can bend in the wind. Supposedly, when you plant trees, it, the conventional wisdom now is not to stake it down tight so that the tree can't move because it gets a lot of its, its strength by moving in the breeze. I'm not sure if that works for something this small. Something this small, I think we just wanted to get up and growing. I don't think it's going to hurt it to, to limit the amount of of movement but this does allow some movement and as weebles they wobble but they don't fall down so that's a plus my concern with this fiberglass rod was that the ground we're putting it into is pretty rocky and i thought if we were pounding in these fiberglass rods which are only three eighths of an inch in diameter um they would be splintering and if they hit a rock it would splinter on the rock and it wouldn't be very strong so that was like between two and three dollars or so for the um the driveway markers out of fiberglass. Another option that we considered was just, this is half inch PVC pipe. This actually is um, uh, electrical conduit, PVC con electrical conduit, but the same idea. Um, so we could put that in as far as we wanted. We could drive that into the ground pretty well on this soil. Again, one of my concerns is in the rocky soil, PVC pipe isn't gonna like push rocks out of the way or do anything. Um, and it wasn't cheap. I don't remember what the dollar amount was for the PVC pipe, but it, it was not a, they didn't give it away. Um, but it doesn't rot, which is nice. So the fiberglass doesn't rot and the um, PVC pipe doesn't rot. So the other option we turned talked about, which I think is the, the option that we're, we're finally doing here is we bought, this is three eighths inch rebar and we bought it in a 20 foot length. And then took 20 feet, um, cut it into four or five foot lengths. So we have five foot lengths of rebar. So it's plenty long enough for what we're doing here. Again, we're driving it maybe 12 inches into the ground. So there's four feet out of the ground. But rebar, you can pound on and you don't have to worry about it breaking. You don't really have to worry about it rotting away. You do have to worry about it rusting. But to be honest, that's a long time before a piece of rebar is going to rust out enough that it's going to um, diminish its, its usefulness. So uh, that's kind of the direction we're going. Um, that ended up being about $1.60 a, a stake when you took the 20-foot the length and, and cut it into four sections. The way we cut that was we cut it with um, a bolt cutter. I've got a short bolt cutter, like an 18 inch bolt cutter, which really was not enough leverage to, to cut this rebar. Something that, you know, a four foot long bolt cutter would do this with no problem at all. And you could whip through this pretty easily. Um, because our bolt cutter was shorter, I didn't have enough leverage. So I ended up putting a pipe on one end and attaching the bolt cutter uh, into a longer, um, wooden structure to hold it in place and then used it as kind of a, a clamping thing that I could um, slice through these things. Uh, it, it worked pretty well, um, except that, again, the uh, the bolt cutter I used, we, which we bought at Harbor Freight, is an inexpensive um, uh, bolt cutter. Um, it got misaligned. So when I would chop it down, 
it wouldn't go all the way through. So I had to slide, uh, turn it a little bit and then chop it down and turn it a little bit and chop it down. And we had 40, 40, 40 of these 20 foot lengths, which we cut into 160 posts. So 40, so that's 120 cuts. I was pretty tired by the end of the night after, after doing that. Um, but it's, it has some rigidity. It's not going any place. You can bump into it and it just pops back into, into place. I think it protects the, the tree pretty well. The next issue that we had was whether we were going to put them on the inside, like what we have here, or have the tube go on the outside, or not the tube, but the, uh, the rebar go on the outside. And um, whether this is right or wrong, we decided to go with the rebar on the outside. It seemed to be pretty secure. Um, and I was concerned about when the tree gets bigger, theoretically with these tubes, you can leave them on until the trees are this diameter and then it will split off. Um, and then it still gives that deer protection and other um, protection from other like rodents and things like that. Um, and I was concerned that if the rebar was in there, then we couldn't get the rebar off and it would be um, pushed into the tree. So if we did it on the outside, we could pull the rebar out and leave these things in place. And then we could reuse the rebar. So, um, you know, a dollar, what did I say, a dollar sixty, dollar seventy a, a piece. Um, we're, we're going to be planting more trees in this project. So I would like to be able to reuse that rebar. Anyway, let's go on out to the, the site and we'll give you an, uh, an introduction of what we're doing out there and show you how we're installing these. So here we are on site. You can see behind me, there's a, a forest of plastic tubes, each one representing some 20 species of trees that are all maybe about a foot tall at this point. Um, probably $2 a piece, so not a lot of money for a, a forest area this big. But as you can see right here, you can see what our problem is. So it's starting to rain a little bit. We're getting a little bit of wind and this just blows over. The um, bamboo is not enough to, to support it. It just bends too much. And then we didn't have it supported at the bottom, so it tends to kick out. You can see our little dogwood here, just starting to send up some leaves at the very top. We had mulched around the tubes so I kind of don't want fresh mulch up at the base of the, the tree. We moved all of these nice little wire ties from the way that the company had them originally, which was one at the bottom and then one lined up at the top. We're going to realize that that was probably a worthwhile thing to have it that way. So we're going to go back to so that way, fortunately, they came with these nice cable ties that are releasable. So if you need to take it apart for this or you need to take it apart for um, viewing, you just push this button and it releases just nice. So let's put in the rebar. So we've got five foot rebar. This is three eighths inch rebar. I'm going to put it a couple inches away push it into the ground. Now, my choice of doing this is with a level. Julie has perfect level eyesight, so she doesn't need this, but this is a nice level. It's good for a, a fen or fence post or a four by four or something because it has a level on two sides. So you can get both directions level at the same time. Otherwise you have to flip around to the wrong, uh, the other, uh, the other edge. So get it generally level. You can tell I'm hitting a rock or something. So it doesn't want to stay there. Okay. So if I were to start this project again, particularly with a lot of people working on it, I would probably lay out the rebar and paint a line along it so that people had an idea about how far 12 inches is. So you know how far to put it into the ground. Now I'm putting it in again, the rebar on the outside, work the tree up into it, down in there 
tighten up the zip ties. You can push the mulch back around. That's looking pretty good. And I think this is going to be pretty steady. It, it has a lot of movement, but it always goes back to beginning. So, that's what we're doing. We thought we'd let you learn from our mistakes and learn some things that worked out for us. So the rebar seems like it's going to be a good option. We're looking forward to these uh, trees popping up out of the top of the, uh, the, the um, tree tubes at some point. When you look at these things on, online, everybody talks about how great they are because they, they, uh, the trees, while it inhibits side branching, it encourages the tree or the, whatever it is to, uh, to grow up to the top and to grow up to the light. So it's supposed to grow faster. We'll see if it really does that. Anyway, thanks for coming along.